Hi, I'm Daria. In 2019, I was a student at Southern New Hampshire University in the Anthropology Department. And my project was on the Mississippian Culture Archaeology course, um, Studies into the Past and Present, 2019. In juxtaposition to the evolutionary model, there was unease about the vanishing Indian, quote unquote, a mythological history of the 18th and 19th centuries that depicted Native Americans as a vanishing race incapable of adapting to the new American civilization. In this <coughs> academic presentation, um, we're going to look at the cultural groups under that, the belief and practices, key historical and cultural events, the physical environment, connections and modifications. Then we're going to take a look at methodology, mounds and artifacts, research methods, artifacts and mound sites. Then a look at connections, economic, social, religious, impact on history, and then lastly, connections to our past and present human story. Did you know, Mississippian mound culture was coined the Southern cult or SECC due to the symbology of its artifacts that resemble pre-Columbian Mayan and Incan iconography. Mounds and artifacts, SECC Southern Cult, trade on the Mississippi River in America. And look at the cultural group. Mississippi Mound Builders and American Ancient Past. Let's learn more. Paleo American remains found in the Yucatan in pre-Mayan Mexico. A slender, buck-toothed 15 or 16-year-old girl fell into a flooded underground, underground cavern about 12,000 years ago. She was a Paleo-American with features more akin to Africans and Southeast Asian than modern Native Americans. Clark and Johnson 2014 and this is where there is a schism of um, not understanding or respecting the fact that the indigenous um, Americans were of a paleo American um, I don't want to say race but um, the earliest from the earliest stock of humans and um, after that what is coined as the native the native American that we see today on the reservations those were um, those those inhabitants came later is what I'm trying to say um, and so they were sometimes part of the indigenous family and sometimes they were at war with other tribes other older tribes um, on the North American continent belief and practices who the Mississippian mound builders, also referred to as the Southern Ceremonial Complex, SECC, consist of chiefdoms or tribal trade nations and priesthood artisans' clans existing along the Mississippi River waterway from the Gulf of Mexico, including mounds built in Illinois, Cahokia, Georgia, the Etowah, Alabama, Moundville, Oklahoma, Spiro, Minnesota, Silver, Silver Nail, Florida, Lake Jackson, Tennessee, Castalian Springs, Virginia, Carter Robinson, and other locations in the United States, Hearst 2017. The people 
were not all migrants from the Bering Straits as DNA discoveries have provided new evidence suggesting much older populations were ancient to North America. What? The Mississippi artifacts display religions and spiritual significance within a southern cult culture. The serpent is particularly found as a central deity throughout the southern cult mounds and the artifacts including the birdman artifacts are similar in style craftsmanship artisan metallurgy and spiritual religious iconography these artifacts are representative of the mound effigy iconography throughout the mississippian waterways and mounds found throughout the southern eastern tribal indigenous Indian states. Key historical and cultural events. Theory of migration redefining human cultural activity in the Americas. Mississippi mound builders were trading along the mound sites including the Caribbean islands such as Cuba, Hispaniola, and other other islands. Louisiana, the Jefuncta and Poverty Point mound sites, the New Orleans Gulf aligned to the Gulf of Mexico, the Yucatan, Mexico, Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Mayan Empire. Significantly, significantly Gulf Coast Mississippian River is the Memphis of the Americas. Maps prior to 1808 prove that what was once modern state of Louisiana was considered West Florida. According to the Aboriginal Chata history, West Florida was once part of the Caribbean. A Paleo American a Paleo Amerindian girl was found in the Yucatan, which suggests there were ancient human migrations, trade and cultural activity along the Gulf of Mexico into North America, respectively, the southern eastern mound sites and waterways. DNA that is that is considered the oldest documented as Adam is from South Carolina in the United States is considered 60,000 to 140,000 years old according to Barris 2013. Today this Adam is classified as an African American. Other findings prove that ancient modern human fossils were found in the Caribbean island of Guadalupe. A five foot tall woman, according to Cremo 1991. Note, my family via ancientancestry.com showed that many of my Native American, indigenous American cousins carried Andean Native American DNA and they reside in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. Modern human fossils and genetics prove that migration theory should be revisited and inclusive of the ancient quote-unquote Negro genome haplogroup and redefine pre- and post-lithic Paleo-American Amerindian, which dates 10,000 to 3500 BCE. Mesoamerican Archaic Indians um, dated 3500 to 2000 BCE, Preclassic 2000 BCE to 250 CE, Early Preclassic, Middle Classic, etc. timelines and definitions that align with new archaeological findings. Physical Environment Where? Residents and cultural activity was along the Mississippi River Valley. Many townships included strategically constructed architecture along the natural river and waterway systems to include mound pyramid structures, also known to, to be on astrological star constellation and magnetic key ley lines, points similar to temples and pyramids in Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize and Egypt geographically in North America mounds including those of the northern of the Mississippian archaic Hopewell Adena woodland periods exist on North American waterways such as the Ohio River Mississippi River the Great Lakes Mississippian mound sites include the regions of the Midwest Southeast Oneonta Fort 
ancient South Appalachian Mississippian, Middle Mississippian, Caddoan Mississippian, Plaquemine Black, from the Gulf of Mexico to the Great Lakes. How did they work and live? These tribal chiefdoms were sophisticated mound builder cultures, part of a larger trade, economic, and spiritual political system and network. Their mounds were architectural sites built for spiritual ritualistic power and honor of their deities, king chiefs, queen chiefs, <laughs> and dead ancestors, including water, elemental, anthropomorphic human animal deities, gods, and effigy animal spirits. Their chiefdom sites or dwellings consisted of mounds and pyramids, water irrigation systems, Within in the desert regions, plaza complexes, towns, villages, on the mound complex with with settlements, the people were artisans, craftsmen, bronze and copper metallurgy artists, gemstone and jewelry craftsmen, blade and arrowhead gemstone crafters, axe weapon artisans, pottery craftsmen, builders and architects, masons, including hunters and gatherers and architects architectualists, farmers, and cultivators. These clans included heads of government by both matrilineal and patrilineal family traditions. Connections quote, Cahokia was the largest city north of Mexico. The mound sites themselves were zoomorphic effigies that represent various animal mythology and cultural spiritual archetypes. They may also represent specific tribal clan chiefdoms and mystery systems within the tribal nations and trade artisan groups like the Mayan, sun, moon, wind, magician, snake king, t temples, the Khans, and the city villages. The Mississippian mounds also seem to represent similar, almost identical motifs. North American mound effigies include Rattlesnake Mound, Eagle Mound, Alligator Mound, Bear Creek Mound, strong warrior gods and chief king clan culture with advanced trade systems. Many tribal wars took place, rivals, and generational conflicts. The SECC similarities include artifacts, ceremonies, mythologies, and spiritual iconography, agricultural practices similar to Mayan pre-Columbian nations such as cosmology, ancient cross motifs, tree of life, and cedar tree motifs, swastikas, snake underworld deity, and avian bird plume serpent gods such as the Kukuklan bearded serpent, the, the Quetzalcoatl, Naga feathered serpent, the wind, commerce, underworld, agriculture, technology, magic, equivalent to the Egyptian Heru falcon warrior god and his father Osar or Osiris, god of vegetation, resurrection, resurrection in the underworld. These gods were also attributed to older older ancient snake reptile gods and mythologies church wo church word quotes none of the prehistoric races that have inhabited north america have caused more interest and speculation than the mound builders on their ornaments and pottery found various religious symbols connecting them with pre a prehistoric race in mexico and with the mu the motherland of of man. By these symbols it is shown that they possessed a highly scientific knowledge where they perfectly understood the great cosmic sciences which today are just dawning on our scientific world. The cosmic sciences included the origin and the workings of the four great primary forces, the parent of all forces. By comparing other symbols of the mound builders with those carved on Neven's Mexican ta tablet, it appears to show some def definite connection between them and that these 
Indian legends are history orally handed down. Modifications and other facts. Mountains are either square, circular, or rectangle shaped architecture. There are no known modifications. When William Bartram and other recorded local Native American narratives of, of the mounds, they seemingly corroborated these mythical origins of the mounds. According to Bartram's early journals, travels originally published in 1791 the creek and the cherokee he lived who lived around mounds attributed attributed their construction to the ancients many ages prior to their arrival and possessing of this country Ma dna from 1200 year old skeleton help answer the question who were the first Americans the small number of early American specimens discovered so far have smaller and shorter faces and longer and narrower skulls than later Native Americans more closely resembling the modern pe people of Africa Australia and the South Pacific this has led to speculation that perhaps the first Americans and Native Americans or indigenous Americans came from different homelands. Kumar, 2014. Mississippi Mound Builders, Mounds and Mesoamerican Artifacts. Let's learn more. Mounds and Artifacts. Artifacts and features of the Mississippi Mound builders of this southern eastern ceremonial complex features include the mounds made up of the mississippian mound culture and their unique animal human iconography artifacts made of shell gorgets religious conch shells pottery heads and spiritual motifs and ancestor or chief king pipes and on the right you see that there's the birdman from ottawa from etowa georgia there's the Braden style warrior marine shell gorget. There's the shell gor gorget. Um, fourth is the high tower birdman. Fifth is the engraved well shell showing a tattooed man from Oklahoma. Uh, six is a face of a tattooed evergy pot from Arkansas. Number seven is a snake head from the from the Etowah mounds of Georgia. Eight is engraved conch shell dipper cup from the Craig Mound in Oak Spiro, Oklahoma. Nine and ten is the Missis Mississippi effigy stone tobacco pipe found in Virginia. Featured artifacts: the Rogan plate from the Etowah Mound, Georgia. The Rogan Birdman copper plate artifact bridges not only the so-called Southern cult through, or SECC through its consistent Mayan pre-Columbian Mesoamerican warrior cult, CGSS late Paleo-Indian period, Mississippi, Mississippian copper plates, not dated, masks spiritual motifs. Secondly, it illustrates that the Mississippian tribal groups were in many ways co cohesive in their economic, political, spiritual practices and systems, their trade and re religions, because the Etowa plate and other copper plates are linked by metallurgy, lo logistics of source and key production centers. The copper birdman mo motif is significant among other artifacts because this cultural art with specific ritualistic ret representation can be found throughout the Mississippian mound sites, all of them. Description. The Rogan avian bird copper plate was found in Cartersville, Georgia at the Etowah Mound site. It depicts a tribal man or warrior god with Mayan-looking indigenous regalia and ritualistic spiritual costume, wearing beads, earplugs, braided and dreaded hair, waist, arm and leg jewelry, ritual headdress, and feathers with what looks like a double-headed bladed axe with a spiritual ritual in a spiritual ritual 
instrument, a rattle, and a weapon in one hand, and a human sacrifice head in the in the other hand. hand. The human body is adorned in large, oversized bird feathers and a bird beak or avian animal mask, uh, which is uh, the CGSS late Paleo Indian period, the Mississippian copper plates not dated. The human bird man is wearing an an, an, an apron. Hmm. The figure shows the warrior aspect of the tribe or cultural system. It is noted that human sacrifice was depicted and practiced throughout both the Inca, Maya spiritual political systems and kingdoms. High priests and kings were one in Peru, Kundin, Amaraca, worshipped the sun and moon and performed human heart sacrifice just like the Maya. The Peruvian kings had natural th- fetish king worship rituals, striking natural objects. Lakes were sacred holy places. The Rogan Etowa plate is illustrated from an original found by Rogan with no mention to the whereabouts of the original. In my research, I found that many of the Mississippian artifacts were either stolen, sold, or uh, even today available on auctions throughout the United States. The artifact is made of copper metal and oxidized, producing a greenish turquoise colored overlay is 20 inches made of very thin lightweight sheet copper and a lot of the copper was coming from the Michigan area just to note Um, heating and hammering methods of the coppersmithing was analyzed and theorized to produce embossed CGSS late paleo Indian period Mesoamerican plates not dated Research methods. The research methods used in th- to find the Mississippian mound sites and their artifacts have been largely field surveys to map sites, um, including site evac- ex- excavations, including studying the site function of the tribal cultural activities and roles within its society. Other methods could be radiocarbon dating, crop marks or soil analysis, and various sa- sampling methods. In- intensive foot surveys of the site itself and uh, if you look to the right you'll see a very very um, powerful image of an indigenous of what an what an indigenous um, first paleo Amerindian looked like see his very strong um, some say African or how you could say in indigenous features um, he and this is a pipe effigy and he had a tattooed face tattooed body and a beard <laughs> um, and there is also a god animal which is the avian the bird there's a taloon uh, rattlesnake and w- which resembles below world um, the Birdman as the Great Serpent, or the Great Pan- and as the Great Panther uh, mo- motifs, and it was made in sandstone, about three, three by five inches, found in Virginia Cumberland mounds. Appropriate method, lidar, amazing results in new archaeological discoveries. A recent 29 archaeology discovery was found in Guatemala jungle coined the Megalopolis of the Mayan Snake Kings, a 60,000 stone complex Mayan empire in the Piton region of the Mayan Biosphere Reserve. The technology used to find this site is with, is with LIDAR, um, which means light detecting and ranging. Tech technology using laser infrared snapshots to survey and map the the land mass creating a 3d topographical model this on one site alone has increased the Mayan Empire by 15 million people this discovery proves that there may have been more hidden Mayan related empires to discover and that there is much more to the Mayan civilization we are still not only 
discovering but literally just finding out the land had been previously surveyed by archaeologic archae, archaeologists and, and scientists but nothing was found under the dense overgrown jungle i would use lidar to better detect the possible mississippian mound sites and their structures to date location in public private land the artifact was found in this artifact was found in cartersville Georgia at the Etowah Mound Complex, initially a public place that later became under the domain of the Georgia state government. The ethical considerations are any indigenous or Native American burial law land. As I, as I shared, I found many artifacts, news posts, and even pu public auctions where Mississippian artifacts were either stolen, lost, and being sold to date. This both angered and saddened me deeply. I could not believe that this was still going on in a manner so disrespectful to not only the indigenous American heritage, but also pieces to our puzzling historical past. And on the right is featured a featured artifact from the Mississippian Craig style gorget found in Tennessee, which is so similar to the Etowah mound like the Rogan um, copper plate connections Mississippi mound builders European history and Aboriginal oral history let's learn more Mississippi and culture economic social religious impact on history battle over history and identity James Churchward, this, who wrote The Sacred Symbols of Mu, wrote this quote, The end of the mound builders, like the Khmers of Cambodia, apparently came very suddenly, leaving no trace behind it. The mound builders, as a people, are gone, but did they leave no descendants in America? So let's take a closer look at what and who was in America uh, at the onset of colonization when the Europeans came over here. Uh, you would be very, very, very surprised to see and find um, people who looked like us, like you and me. Very, very beautiful and very dark. What did the early Americans look like? North American Aboriginals or Indigenous and South and Central American Indians. How were the Aboriginal Indians conquered? We are victims of the doctrine of discovery, quote by Chief Warhorse of the Chahacha Funkta Nation. Constructed by Pope Alexander the Fifth of Spain. On May 4th in 1493, the Papa Bull Inter Catera stated that any land not inhabited by Christians was available to be discovered, claimed, and exploited by Christian rulers and declared that the Catholic faith and the Christian religion be exalted and be everywhere increased and spread, that the health of souls be cared for, and that barbarous nations be overthrown and brought to faith itself. All European claims in the um, in the Americas, as well as the foundation of for the United States Western expansion. In 1823, the U.S. Supreme Court case John Johnson versus McIntosh, Chief Justice John Marshall opinion in the unanimous decision held that that the principle of discovery gave European nations an absolute right to new new world lands. And this is basically how um, the North American continent and the Caribbean was conquered. Lost tribes and unrecognized tribes, North American Aboriginal, in Indigenous, and Native American tribes. 
Mississippian mound builder nations and people, did they disappear or die off? What do you think? Mississippian mound builder nations and mounds. And I have an image of the Mississippian southern Indians from North America, which um, have a pre Columbian Mayan Almec Central American um, connection. Who are they? We have the Seminoles of Florida, the Muscogee Creek. We have the Yamasi of Georgia, the Carolinas, Florida, the Gal, the Creek. We have the Lumbee, the Cherokee, North Carolina, the Swin. We have the Pamunkey of Virginia and Maryland of the Algonquin. We have the Chata or Choctaw, Louisiana, Florida, Chifuncta, Muscogean. We have the Lakota Sioux, the North Dakota. North Dakota, South Dakota, the Sioux, the, the Blackfoot, the Montana, the Canada, Canada from of the Algonquin. We have the 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 the, the Lenape of Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Canada of the Algonquin, and there are so many others. There's the Washita. Um, I think when I when I did this in 2019, I had not learned of the Washita and, and until then um, and they have claim to a lot of American land also if you do the history do the knowledge southeastern regions law and tribes five civilized tribes aboriginal and reestablishment of the tribes and territory government recognized and modern Native Americans we have the Choctaw or the Choctaw the Cherokee Chickasaw the Seminole and the Creeks and these are images of what they looked like and what they look like today southeastern Indians removal wars and trail of tears European and American Indian wars and there's so many that um, it could take up a whole page it could take up a whole like hours of lectures um, that there has been wars since the arrival of the European here um, so to speak there's a whole lot more history to that even um, with um, brothers like Kurumio Aho who is uh, has been working for for years to read a lot of these um, early books uh, to break down that the Europeans and which were um, a lot of a lot of them have indigenous um, um, ancestry uh, had already come here also and mixed in with the Native American tribes. Um, and a lot of those people who called themselves U Europeans were um, of a swarthy, dark skin hue also. So there's a lot of history in North America that, um, that, that many of us are waking up to. Um, yeah. South American Indian, this focuses on the Chata tribe again this was um, created in 2019 before I knew of the Washita um, and other and other um, indigenous tribes and ancient ancient ones um, who who claim to be ancient on this on this North American land that are connected to the Mayan but for the sake of this particular presentation that I did in 20 in, in 2019 I'm going to continue to read what I had researched of the of the of the Ch Chata tribe from chief war chief warhorse okay so facts and oral history from chief warhorse um, she is known as the queen of the of the Chifuncta chief of the Chata nation um, and was appointed in 1998 
the indigenous tribal name of her tribe is the Chata, the God's people, later renamed Choctaw by European explorers. But there are many different Chata nations um, in North America. So I just want to make that um, distinction. Um, the, Choct uh, the Choctaw name was used, Choctaw name was used by government appointed modern native native americans the u.s government divided dark-skinned aboriginal indigenous americans from the bering straits modern native americans the chata nation not is not was not federally recognized by the u.s government as of 2019 and they are known as the waterway people their lineage, the Aboriginal Indigenous American, Ancient Paleo American Indian, and the Meso Indian, um, 6000 BC, if not older, are descendants. They have older DNA from modern Native American, um, and there are 365 elders of the Indigenous tribe. The ancient and current land region, her grandfather. Um, she qu qu she quoted in oral history of um, saying we owned as far as the eyes can see from Gulf of Mexico to the Appalachian Mountains. The Louisiana region in 1803 formerly was known as West Florida and, and Mississippi, which was formerly Louisiana. Um, the Bonfuca village water of the bayou or swamp uh, periods mounds mound builder errors in the economic history mississippian culture comes away after the chata culture the defunct period was known from 6000 bc to 12 ad prior to poverty point which is at 2000 bc to 6600 bc Mound, mound builders from ancient times to the present. They were f first known as the first brick makers, known and tied to brickyards in, Lu in Louisiana. Long distance trade, they traded with Cuba, um, and I'm pretty sure with other South and Central um, nations. Also the Caribbean islands by way of schooners and ships and boats documented by early Europeans. Y'all gotta read a book. It's in those books. Southeastern Indian Chata tribes, descendants of the Mississippian mound builders. Facts and oral history from Chief Warhorse. Um, let's say the tribal rituals include the mound building celebration, the Day of the Dead celebration, the connection to Olmec Mayan lineage. Chata Mountains has a giant Olmec heads by way of mounds and brick monuments. Bolivian tribe elders recognize North American Chata as relatives and descendants of their ancestors. And U.S. law and policy to date uh, recognized American Indian, reclaimed American Indian status in 20, 2010 on the U.S. U.S. Census. Tribal members reclassified from other and Creole by the U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau Census. Part of the descendants of the Choctaw, Choctaw Creek, the Cherokee who refused to leave their their land under Andrew Jackson Trail of Tears, unrecognized American Indian tribe by the U.S. federal government to date. Written out of history books, stolen identity and paper, genocide. There was the doctrine of de discovery in 1493, mandated under the U.S. Constitution. There was the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, the Republic of West Florida of 1810, which can, which includes modern-day Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. There's the Sundry Law Act of 1790 for transatlantic slave trade, which was told in reverse. <laughs> There's eminent domain, Boom versus Patterson, 98 US, U.S. 403, 406 from 1879. There's the General Allotment Act of the Dawes Severality Act of 1887. There's the Racial Integrity Act of 1924, the One Drop Rule, which lobbied by Walter.
Plecker of Virginia. We all know who that is. Economic culture. Economics of the tribes were affected when European settlers, explorers, and conquerors came to the Americas. As stated in oral history and documented, these American Indians were involved in trading not only in North America, but the Caribbean, South, and Central America. Land redistribution resulted in loss of, I of identity and culture. U.S. law and policy consistently worked as a system to confine and destroy indigenous culture, the wealth and tribal sovereignty. By using the pen as a weapon in the case of paper genocide, black Indians were not provided recognition to land rights, identity, and have little authority over their ancestral land to date. Mound sites and archaeological ar artifacts are linked to the indigenous of the Americas. Featured on the right is the Etowah, Georgia Mound and Bird Rogan Artifact Iconography. Oral History of the Chata N Nation in America quote, quote, History proves that the Chata were once in control from the Gulf of Mexico to the Appalachian Mountains. My grandfather told me, at one time we owned everything farther than a man's eye can see, but they kept pushing and pushing and pushing us, trying to push us off the face of the earth. Quote, Ancient regions in America, before the European arrived here to the Americas, we were in the swamp area of West Florida. T today those people identify us as Louisianans. Before there was a West Florida, we were in Chifuncta, or the Chata region. History proves that once the Chata were once in control from the Gulf of Mexi Mexico to the Appalachian Mountains. What the European began to was to change the names. My grandmother and them went to bed in West Florida and woke up and they was in America. How did that happen? Europe European migration, European laws which placed me in what's called Louis Louisiana. The power of the pen became becoming law, land and identity. What at the European what at the European began to do was to change names so they started changing names as they wrote books back to France and Spain and those books show the changing of of the names there but here people didn't see that change for instance right now I'm in West Florida but legally by papers I'm in Louisiana now when did we make it to Louisiana and never move, never caught a boat, nothing. Still in the same place we've been for thousands of years, but we end up in a place called Lu Louisiana. My grandmother and them went to bed in West Florida, woke up, and they was in America. How did that happen? European mi migration, European laws, which placed me in Louisiana. Social culture. Many black Indian tribes to today are not federally recognized by the U.S. government. Others continue to fight for recognition and, and inclusion into modern Native American tribes that continue to classify them as descendants of African slaves and modern Native American lineage, although some tribal members have dual ancestry and lineage and others do not. Such is the case of the defuncta, of the defuncta Chata, who are descendants of the Mississippi Mound Builders and Aboriginal Indigenous um, Americans. Defuncta Chata continue to celebrate their ancient culture with mound building ceremonies and Day of the Dead ceremonies that resemble both Mississippian and Mayan culture. Religious culture. Poverty Point Mound and Jefuncta on artifacts. We, we're the mound builders. I am a mound builder, building and making brick. We were known as being the first brick makers. Court records say we were the richest brick 
brick makers. When Louisiana burnt down, our bricks built, rebuilt New Orleans. We were independent. We were entrepreneurs doing business around the world, doing long distance trade and manufacturing. I asked my grand, my grandfather, where do we come from? He said, we've been here always. Chief Warhorse, Oral History. Day of the Dead, Ceremony, Jefuncta, and Mexico. Ancient mound builders, Jefuncta, Poverty Point, Chata Land, West Florida, 1808. Chata Brick Builders of Louisiana, Ancient Mound Builders, Bo Bolivia Inca and Ancient Mayan Lineage, Chata Olmec Heads, Chata Mountain, name of the Aboriginal Indian Tribe. Impact on Population The research I conducted and studied not only impact the Chifuncta Chata Nation by mere recognition, awareness, and human family ties, but more importantly affect the reader and those who find this information and data useful. Personally, this research as it unfolded for me these past few weeks in 2019 and days drastically provided some healing and closure from my own Native American, Aboriginal American, and African American ancestors. I once saw them in shallow graves hidden from our, from our memories and today I feel and see them standing with dignity and honor. I realize I am a researcher, a storyteller, a scribe with the responsibility of sharing the history that must be told for the healing of all people on this planet. Mississippi Mound Builder Connections to Our Past and Present Human History. Let's learn more. Thanks for watching this presentation. I enjoyed this class, doing this research and expanding thought and analysis and perspective based on scholarship.